let's talk about unemployment benefits now. Here's what you need to know about what's happening on the unemployment benefits front. Unemployment insurance. Uh, all of these things are about to run out. Unemployment insurance, unemployment benefits. We'll break them all down for you. Uh, but this is not good. I mean, we have uh, the unemployment benefits will end today. And uh, for millions of Americans, um, it, it really, really a sad moment. And I, don't, I haven't seen the mainstream media really talking about this at all. Yeah, but it's only ending for these lazy people that don't want to get jobs. So exactly. So, you know, who cares? That's the narrative, right? It's just lazy people. It's just lazy, lazy people, people, lazy people that don't want to go work their asses off for, you know, $7 an hour and not even be able to pay their bills. I mean, if I was in a system where I had a choice of going and working for $7 an hour and not even be able to get in the head or, or take government benefits, I'd t I'd milk that system. Yeah, because you know what? Congress can't Congress can't raise the minimum wage. So seven twenty five in twenty twenty one is minimum wage. Yeah, maybe it's time. I mean, it should to be like thirty dollars. We're, we're arguing about fifteen dollars. You're still arguing about a, a a non livable wage in a lot of places. Fifteen dollars is a minimal minimal is a minimum. Excuse me, a livable wage in rural Kansas. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe not now with inflation. Yeah. I saw someone in our chat just a few minutes ago said they worked uh, 90 plus hours last week. Belinda, I believe. 90 hours. Unemployment insurance of $300 a week will end for more than 7 million Americans today, which brings economic uncertainty and a huge, you know, amid this like resurgence of COVID-19. When you see states all through the South now having continued resurgence of covid Approximately 26 states have already ended the un, uh, the enhanced unemployment benefits ahead of this big exec, uh, expiration date. Some governors saying that these unemployment benefits are a disincentive for Americans to return to work, even though, as I've pointed out multiple times, and I'm happy to do it again if I need to, e even in the Wall Street Journal, your conservative Wall Street Journal, states that cut unemployment benefits saw limited impact on job growth. Yep, that's right. So don't fall from that narrative, fall for that narrative like you heard from Representative uh, Texas Kevin Brady, who said, yeah, you know, just all of these unemployment benefits just really keeping people from working. Nope. Pandemic relief has been an essential way for unemployed Americans to pay for things that they need right now, rent, food, other necessities during the pandemic. So let's go through what some of these unemployment benefits mean for you today which unemployment benefits will end and what you need to know about. There's four types of federal unemployment benefits that are going to end today. First, let's talk about the P, uh, the FPUC, which is the Federal Pandemic Unemployment Compensation, the pandemic, un uh, and then we'll talk about the other ones here in a, in a minute and what this all lines up to look like. Uh, again, these four that we've got to deal with. Um, the, the Federal Pandemic Unemployment Compensation uh, first, let's start there. This is a $300 a week of supplemental employment benefits. Although you'll remember it was as high as 600 under Trump at one point. That's ending today. But again, a lot of states already said, hey, thanks, federal government, but we're not going to hand this money out to people. We're going to show a surplus at the end of the year. Right. So our state will have a surplus. So thanks for sending us that money. The other one is the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation, the PEUC. These unemployment benefits provided financial relief to those who already exhausted their state benefits, which is typically 26 weeks. Now it varies by state. So that's ending as well. Then you have mixed earners, mixed earners unemployment compensation. This unemployment benefits program provided $100 a week for those who worked as both an independent contractor and an employee. So 100 bucks a week, gone, done. And then the PUA, this was another big one. Um, that expanded eligibility criteria to include self-employed individuals and freelancers, that's also done. So what employment insurance is available right now? Well, it depends on your state. You might qualify for unemployment benefits insurance in your state. Again, this is gonna be separate from the federal unemployment insurance that is ending. Um, and then you're also looking at, I mean, here's how the numbers break down, how many people are actually losing unemployment insurance. Right now, 
you have uh, 7.5 million will lose unemployment benefits um, in according to the Century Foundation estimates. Pandemic unemployment assistance is 4.2 million people. Okay. Uh, 3.3 million people will be uh, without the pandemic emergency unemployment compensation benefits. So that's what? That's 7 million, 4 million, 3 million to, so far. Then on top of that, uh, you've got uh, the additional batch of unemployment benefits for self-employed workers, which could be in upwards of uh, two to three million as well. So, you know, there's no indication right now that Congress is going to extend this. Well, I mean, it makes sense. The pandemic's over. Everybody's, you know, Wall Street's flourishing. Um, people are yeah. doing doing well. They're, you know, their rent's all paid up. Everybody's caught up. Like, there's no inflation. Like, I don't know. I don't see what the problem is. Yeah. I mean, look at Wall Street today. Yeah. Doing great. On the up, yeah. I mean, and fortunately, the pandemic's over. You know, nobody's still dealing with that. So I don't know what yeah, the problem it's all good. is. End it. Yeah, everything's, everything's done. You don't have to worry about this stuff anymore, man. All good. You know? So they're cutting these all off. So how many people right now, I mean, how many people right now are, are, are relying on these unemployment benefits? Let's remember that these unemployment benefits... You know, are meant to help those people who, for instance, didn't have access to daycare for their children. The schools are closed, so they they have a, they don't have the choice. I and mean, what do they do? They have to stay home to take care of their children, right? There's not like a daycare center at the Walmart where they work. And what a miserable existence that would be. I'm going to put you in the Walmart daycare center while I work for peanuts. Well, and think about the peanuts that the 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 Walmart care center is getting paid. They're not really going to care about your kid. Yeah, and the Walmart, as we just pointed out from the from the story a few minutes ago, Walmart, you know, with seventy five offshore tax haven locations, billions of dollars in profits that they don't pay taxes on, and they're worried about increasing uh, being you know, being taxed more so that we can pay for things like daycare, child care, elder care. Uh, it, better benefits uh, around, uh, you know, lowering prescription drug costs, et cetera. I mean, think about that daycare and childcare right now is like, that's a, like another mortgage payment. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't pay for daycare, but I'm curious, like in our chat, like what, what is the cost of daycare? Does anyone have any idea? Um, Amy Perkins says, I have four phone interviews today for jobs working from home. All pay over $15 an hour and two have a thousand dollar signing bonus. Good for you, Amy. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Uh, James says I have, I didn't receive one out of two unemployment checks that I was supposed to receive. <laughs> Great, so they can't even get it to you in the mail. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, expensive. Lordy, good pastor says it's expensive for for daycare. One hundred and sixty a week, and I'm assuming that's probably one kid. Yeah, Teresa says I have about thirty four hundred left in my pandemic unemployment assistance. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Teresa says, yeah, daycare has always been way too much for a regular working person. Yeah, sadly, you know, it, it's it's interesting. Daycare ends up being affordable for those people who make like really good money, right? And those people then are, a lot of times they're not even working. You know, it's like they like they work at home, but they're just like, oh, we're putting our kids in daycare so I can just enjoy my, my home life. Not even have to, you know, they're not even at an office. Judith Schultz said two children in daycare equals $800 a month for her. Dean Thomas says, I did a report on childcare and this is $24,000 a year. Wow. Jeez. T Tina, uh, is it Tina? Uh, Cornelia says, my daughter pays $200 a week childcare for a two-year-old and after school care for a two, five, and seven-year-old. Jeez. Especially, uh, Lisa says, especially quality daycare. So glad I don't have to deal with that. What an incredible stress. Rose has three kids and would pay $1,500 a month for daycare. Wow. Dean says, 30 years ago, I was paying $500 a week for two kids. Yeah. Yeah. Ron says, yeah, you go, Bernie. We're not the, we're not the 1%, the 1% of the greedy ones. James, James says, master's degree with 12 years management experience and can't find anything in my field unless I take a job for $40,000 less than what I was making. 
Yeah, not surprising at all. But so these unemployment benefits end today for millions of Americans. Nothing makes sense. Exactly, Judge. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.